Welcome back, everybody, to the Stratomatic replay of the 1919 World Series between the Chicago White Sox and the Cincinnati Reds. Well, let's take a look at how Game 3 really went, as we all thought there was the fix. And, well, in Games 1 and 2, the Reds, we know, won the first two games. But in this replay, I'm having a real hard time putting the White Sox away. In Game 2, which was a very exciting game, and if you haven't watched that, I'm not going to spoil it here, so you need to watch uh, game number two if you've not watched it yet to really enjoy how this, how, how this series is going. In the original game number three, the White Sox actually won that game. So if that being the case, let's see if we can change history here, shall we? Let's get right back. Let's get right to the game, people. Let's see. Cincinnati at Chicago. And this game is going to be here. Let's see here. And we, let's get right down to it, shall we? And it's going to be Fisher against Kerr. And this game is being played at Comiskey. So uh, let's go. Welcome to the stadium for today's ball game. Everybody, welcome. This is Comiskey Park. And this is actually the first time I'm actually presenting this stadium because uh, I have, we haven't visited here yet. So it's an average day at Comiskey. It's the Cincinnati Reds versus the Chicago White Sox. This is game number three. The White Sox lead the series. Two games to none. Let's get right down to it. Comiskey Park. I, I think this is another one of the more gorgeous ball old time old type stadiums. And it's and it was there for a long time. Comiskey was there for a while before, and then the White Sox played in the stadium all those many years before they moved into the US cellular field back in I believe it was nineteen ninety one or ninety two. And as we move through all the ballparks, it's amazing how uh, the old traditional baseball stadiums started as they were, like jewel box stadiums and such. Then they turned into the concrete stadiums, the concrete bowls, and then they went back to the retro modern ballparks. Baseball stadiums is another uh, fascinating uh, interest of mine. Lead, uh, leading starting pitcher for the Chicago White Sox will be Dickie Kerr. In 1919, 13 wins, 7 losses, a 2.89 ERA. Let's get right to it. Top of the first, Maury Rath leads off for the Reds. And here we go, and it starts off with a strikeout. And the next batter will be Jake Daubert. Daubert pops one up. Weaver makes the play, two down. And now we shall see Heine Grow. Grow, it's a fly ball to center. And Happy Felsch is happy to put it away. And the side is retired. Bottom of the first inning. Pitching for the Cincinnati Reds will be Ray Fisher. In 1919, 14 wins, 5 losses, 2.17 ERA. That's pretty good. So we got a pretty good pitcher there. Maybe we can get some good uh, some good mound mastery as we try to at least get one game here in this best of nine. Here's Nemo Liebold for the White Sox. Ground out to second base. Rath will make the play. And that will bring up Eddie Collins. Fly ball to right. Neal will make the catch. Two down. And now here's Buck Weaver. If you look at the lineup, you'll notice that it's Nemo Liebold in the, on the, in the lineup for the White Sox, not Shano Collins. He doesn't, doesn't look like he's starting this game. Fly ball to left. Duncan makes the play. Side retired. Second inning coming up. Here's the best player for the Cincinnati Reds. It'll be Ed Roush, Hall of Famer. That's a ground out to shortstop. Risberg makes the play. One out. And we shall now see Pat Duncan. Duncan grounds one to Risberg at short. Here is the play. It looks like he'll have it. Can he make complete it? Yes, he will. That's a ground out. Two men down. And yes, in this for this series, you are seeing me animate the super advanced fielding chart. Here's Larry Kopf for the Reds. That's going to be a single to right. The Reds get the first base runner. And now the batter is Greasy Neal. Neal flies out to center. Bottom of the inning. And look who's up. It's Mr. Shoeless himself, Joe Jackson. What damage is he going to do? Eh, he's going to take a walk to first. And that will bring up Happy Felsch. Felsch is a ground ball to third. Gro gets the force at second. And now we shall see Chick Gandal for the White Sox. Split card comes up. That's a fly out to center. Roush makes the play. Two men down. And now here's Risberg. 
That's a fly ball to left. Duncan's got very good range. He should make the play. Question is, can he make it? Yes, he can. It's going to be a fly out. Always good to take a sip of coffee. Hills Bill Raritan, top of the third for the for the Reds. He gets a walk. So the Reds get a base runner, and it will be Ray Fisher. The hit and run is on. That's going to be a base hit. And the runners at first and second, and we know what we didn't do. We didn't uh, change the preferences, so... Chicago manages. Here's Maury Rath. There's a ground ball to third. They're going to get one out. And now you got runners at the corners for Jake Daubert. Daubert, it's a fly ball to center that will score the run. And just like game two, the Reds will take the early, will take the lead in the in game three. It's one nothing Reds. Here's Heine Grow with the runner still on first, and that will ground out. And end the inning. Cincinnati 1, Chicago nothing. Bottom of the third. Ray Schalk is the batter. And he lines out right to Coffett short. That's the first out. And now we'll see Dickie Kerr. Kerr, it's a ground ball to Coffett short. Second out. And now here's Liebold for the White Sox. That comes up a clean triple. Clean triple, and that one's given up by Fisher. That was off the hit, that was off the pitcher card. So that's a triple that puts the tying run at third. And now here's Eddie Collins. He walked him, and in a way that kind of worked, kind of worked out. I was actually probably planning on intentionally walking him anyway. But now you got runners at the corners with two men out. Can the Reds actually get out of the inning? Yes, they do. It's a strikeout. Cincinnati Reds 1, Chicago White Sox nothing, fourth inning on a nice day here at Comiskey Park. This is game three of the 1919 World Series. The White Sox lead the series two games to none, and I happen to be playing the Reds in this series. So we're trying to see if the fix was ever in. Here's Ed Roush to lead it off for the Reds. He grounds out to short for the out. And now the batter for Cincinnati will be Pat Duncan. And Duncan's going to get himself a double. That puts a runner on second base. And now here's Larry Kopf. Steer right out. Two down. And now here's Greasy Neal. He got a base hit. Duncan takes third, but they're going to hold him. So it's only runners at first and third. And now Bill Raritan has a chance for the Reds to try to get a big run in. With two men out, Kerr on the mound. Here's the windup, the pitch. That's going to be a fly out to left, and he can't get the run in. We go to the bottom of the fourth side, retireders. Joe Jackson, Shoeless. Shoeless pops it out to third. Grow squeezes it, one out. And now we'll see Happy Felsch. Felsch is going to get a base hit. The White Sox will have a runner on first base. Chick Gandel comes up for Chicago. That's a single to center. And Felsch is being waved to third. Let's see if we can make the play. And he is safe at third. Gandel advances to second on the throw. So runners at second and third now with one out. And Swede Risberg is the batter. So once again, the White Sox threaten. And Jake Dauber. Oh, I thought I hit click his card. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to shortstop to Kopf. Can he make the play? No, that's going to be a base hit. It's a single through the infield. Kopf couldn't get to it. Felsch scores from third, and the White Sox tie it right up. With still runners at the corners and one out, Shock is the batter now. That's a walk. The bases are loaded for the pitcher, Dickie Kerr. The steal attempt, he's running, he's out. Kerr missed the pitch. The steal attempt, and he was thrown out. How's that for excitement? Wow.
<laughs> and that is that was the go ahead run and now Kerr is still at the still on the at the plate and we walk the pitcher just as I said before in game two, when you walk the pitcher, it's just not a good thing. Uh, bad, bad things happen when you walk the pitcher. Here's Nemo Liebold, but we will get out of the inning. It's a ground ball to Kopf, who will make the play, the force out, and uh, retire the side. Cincinnati won, Chicago won, top of the fifth. Ray Fisher leads it off for the Reds. He steer rikes out. And now we shall see Maury Rath. And here is Rath. Here's the pitch. Fly ball to center field. Felsch makes the play. And now Jake Daubert. Daubert steer rights out. Bottom of the fifth. Runs are a premium here against uh, when you're playing against this team. Here's Eddie Collins to lead it off for the White Sox. That's a fly ball to left. Duncan will make the play. One out. If you take a look again at the Reds outfield, take a look. All range of one. So the thing is, they do commit a few errors, but if the ball is hitting the outfield, they're probably going to make the play. Here's Weaver. There's a ground ball to second. Rath will make the play. Second out. And now we have Shoeless. And Shoeless grounds out. So a good inning for the Reds. The White Sox go down in order. We're in the sixth. And here's Heine Grow. Grow, it's a fly ball to Felsch at center. Let's see if he can. He should be able to make the play. And he will. That's a good play by Felsch. One out. And now we shall see Ed Rausch. He grounds out to Risberg for the second out. And now here is Pat Duncan for the Reds. And he pops it up. Weaver makes the play. A quick inning for the White Sox. Bottom of the sixth. And here is Happy Felsch for the White Sox. That's a fly ball to right. Neal will make the play. And now Chick Gandel comes up. A fly ball to center. And the Hall of Famer Ed Rausch makes the play. Two men down. And now here's Swede Risberg. Ground ball to third. And Gro makes the play. Side retired. Six innings in the books. The Reds and White Sox tied at one here at Comiskey Park. We go to the seventh inning. And this is game three of the 1919 World Series. The series is the series is led by the White Sox, two games to none. The Reds right now are doing their best to try to get one game here in Comiskey. In the top of the seventh inning, it will be Larry Koff to lead it off. And that's going to be a double for Koff. So the Reds get the leadoff man at second base. Greasy Neal will come up. Neal comes up with a base hit. Koff takes third. And the Reds have something going. So they have runners at first and third. The White Sox bring the infield in. Bill Raranen is up. Can we get a run in? Yes, we get a base hit to left. Raranen gets the play. Koff will score. We will hold the runners, runners at first and second, but the Reds take the lead two to one. And now Ray Fisher is the batter. He strikes out. Here's Maury Rath. There's a ground ball to Risberg, on to Collins, on to Gando. Double play. Uh, 1903, a Toronto player scored 100 or more runs. The first to do this for that team, who was he? That's going to be Lloyd Mosby. How about that? Cincinnati 2, Chicago 1, bottom of the 7th now. Fisher's on the mound. That was, a big, that, was, that was a big run, but let's see if the Reds can hold it. Here's Schalk to lead it off for the White Sox. He grounds one right to Rath for the out. And now we'll see Dickie Kerr. Steer, right out. Two men down. And now here's Nemo Liebold. Fly ball to right. Neal will make the play. And it's a three up, three down inning. And if you're the Reds, that's exactly what you wanted. We go to the top of the eighth. And the Reds up 2-1. 
Jake Daubert to lead it off for Cincinnati. He starts a base hit to right field. Label will throw it back in, but the Reds get a big base runner. And now here's Heine Groh. Groh gets a base hit. Daubert goes to third. Runners at first and third now for Roush. This is what you want. You got your best hitter up there who batted 321. He's the cleanup hitter. Let's see if he can clean him up. That's a fly ball to Felsch. He should make the play. Question is, will it be enough? He makes the catch, and, hold, and the runner will hold. So the White Sox get a big out. And now here's Duncan. Duncan strikes out. Two men away. And now Larry Koff, who batted 311. It's up to him to see if he can get a runner in here. Nope. Lines out the candle at first. The threat ends. The Reds cannot get a run in. Bottom of the eighth. Ray Fisher. Let's have a look. It's the eighth inning. Let's see how he's doing here. We got to see if he's out of fatigue. Let's visit the mound and see what he says. He says he's fine. All right. Eddie Collins, the leadoff batter. And he walks him. So the tying run gets walked. Collins, of course, a definite threat to steal. Here's Weaver. The hit and run is on. And that one is a fly out to right. Almost cleared the fence, but Neal makes the play. One out. And now here is Shulis, who is 0 for 2 with a walk. He's running. 80% chance. I got to see if I can get him. And he's safe. Collins goes to second. And now Jackson up there. Now, I... Normally, I might put the time the go-ahead run on base, but I'd pretty much be stupid. You got to pitch to Jack. You got to pitch to Jackson. So, and Jackson's a lefty, and I'm going to take a look real quick in the lineup and see if there's anybody I can bring in. And Sally says he's a, a little fatigued, but I got Gurner. And Gurner, a 3.18. I, I got to think what I want to do here against Shoeless Joe Jackson, people. What, what would you do? Would you pitch to Shoeless? Let Fisher see if he can get the play out. Well, the lefty versus lefty is bad. The only problem is Jackson hits. Well, doesn't matter. Jackson is dangerous no matter uh, who's on the mound. I'm going to let Fisher go. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to second. Rath will make the play, but Collins goes to third. And now the batter is happy. Fell. She's one for three with a run scored. So now do we pitch to Felsch? Let's see if Fisher can do the job. Here's the pitch. And he lines out to first, and we get out of the inning. So Fisher does the job, gets out. We go to the top of the ninth, 2-1. And here's the pitch to Greasy Neal. And Neal starts off with a base hit. So again, the Reds get the leadoff runner on, on base. Neal goes to first. And now here's Bill Raritan who's batting 216, thinking I'm going to go ahead and probably bring a pinch hitter. I got to get that runner on. Let's try the bunt. It's a sack bunt. Neal does go to second. And now we'll see a pinch hitter. Kerr's a lefty. So let's bring in a righty. And I th so we're going to bring in Sherry McGee. I think McGee can make the play here. Sherry McGee for the, for the Cincinnati Reds. Big runner on second base. One out. The pitch from Kerr. That's a line drive. It's actually a foul out to the shortstop. Two men down. And now here's Maury Rath. Could it be? Yes, it's a double. Neal scores from second. The Reds take a 3-1 lead. Maury Rath stuns this crowd here at Comiskey with a big-time double. It's now 3-1. And now Jake Daubert will come up, and let's see if he can make the play. Yes, it's a single to center. Felsch is going to have to bring it in. Yes, I'll send the lead runner. They'll cut the throw off and allow the run to score. 4-1 Reds. And now here's Heine Grow. So the Reds come through a little bit in the clutch. Kid Gleason visiting the mound, and Red Faber is going to come on to pitch. Let's have a look at him. Red Faber. In 1919, 11 wins, 9 losses, 3.83 ERA. Heine Groh is the batter with the runner on first. Here's the pitch. 
That's a pop out to first, and the, and the White Sox get out of the inning finally. Let's have a look here. The White Sox are going to have right, right, right. So I'm going to use a right-hander to get them out. And I think we're going to utilize, I don't know how to really pronounce that. I'm sure you pronounce that pitcher's name. But we're going to use him. It's going to be Dolph Luke. In 1919, nine wins, three losses, 2.63 ERA. Dolph Luke, probably pronounced Luke K. But he will get the pitch. Cincinnati four, Chicago one, bottom of the ninth. Can the Reds actually get one against this team? Gandol leads off. Ground ball to short. Koff makes the play. One out. And if you remember what happened in game two, well, spoilers, Swede Risberg leads off. Or actually is the next batter. That's going to be a fly out to right. Neal makes the play. Two men down. Ray Schalk is the, has the last chance for the White Sox. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to short. Koff's got it in his glove. The throw. In there. He got it. The Reds will win. And the crowd here at Comiskey leaves a little bit disappointed as the Cincinnati Reds actually take one game against these Chicago White Sox. The Reds actually put 12 hits on the board. The White Sox only got four. But what a win for the Reds is they got to believe now we can win. We maybe can beat this team. Let's have a look at the box score. So for the, ninth, for the Reds, for the 1919 Reds, Jake Daubert was two for four with two big RBIs today. Greasy Neal, three for four. And Larry Koff, two for four. And Bill Raritan had himself a big RBI. R Fisher gets the win. Luke will get the save. Dickie Kerr takes the loss. Dickie Kerr struck out six. Fisher only struck out two. The Reds left eight on base. The White Sox left seven. Lee bowled at a triple. There were no homers. One stolen base by Collins. The White Sox were one for five with Risp. The Reds were five for four. But I'm going to give the ball, even though Fisher pitched a beautiful game and only gave up a run, one earned run, and he walked five and struck out two. But I'm going to give the game ball in this case. I, I, I got to give it to Jake Daubert. Two for four with two big RBIs. He came through for the Reds. For the White Sox, they kept them quiet, including Julis 0 for three. He did walk. And that was it. Collins was 0 for two. Weaver was 0 for four. The Reds actually did the job here in this game to try to at least get a game on the board, and they do. So let's hear it for the Cincinnati Reds as they actually take the one game from the White Sox, and we'll go to game four with the Reds getting the chance to tie the series up. Well, everyone, that's it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed this one as I actually finally get a game over the White Sox. I'll see you for game four back at Comiskey next time. Once again, the final score, the Reds over the White Sox 4-1 here at Comiskey Park. The series is now two games to one lead by the White Sox. See you next time, everybody.